they're a deterrent for drugs coming into the campus. And uh, they're also just a useful tool for us to have. They're, the things they can do, it would take several police officers a very long time to get done what a dog can do in a very short period of time. I get a lot of uh, comments. People are like, is that really your name? Or is that just your name because you're on the K-9 unit? I'm like, no, my name really is D-Wolf. I know it seems strange, but yes, I am on the K-9 unit. My first dog was Max. He was a, what they call a Belgian Malinois, which are usually the 65 pound uh, dog. Um, this one was a freak of nature. He was 120 pounds. He was absolutely giant and he had the best temperament on him. They did so much positive stuff. They had so many drug finds and so many uh, they had apprehensions. They found lost Alzheimer's patients. They, they did a lot. The department was so pleased with what they did for us in the surrounding communities, they decided to increase the canine unit from one dog to three dogs. There's a chocolate lab drug detection dog, Kayla. I was lucky enough to get her. She was an absolutely great dog. And Kayla got, I didn't say sick, she got old. She had a Lyme disease, ravaged her joints. So she had some, a lot of joint issues, so we retired her. We went out to a bunch of canine vendors, which are businesses that sell police dogs to military, police departments, uh, corporations. And uh, we looked at a lot of dogs and we found, eventually we found Bosco. He's a five-year-old German Shepherd. He comes from uh, the Czech Republic originally. We could go up to him and actually put our hands on him and he wouldn't bite us. Um, that's important on a social campus. He's what they call a dual purpose police dog. So he does narcotics detection and he does the patrol aspect of the police work. So for narcotics, he does uh, marijuana, cocaine and all its derivatives, crack cocaine, uh, does heroin, black tar heroin, straight heroin, methamphetamines, ecstasy. Obviously we know there's still drugs here, but uh, we hope they're not coming in such big amounts. Um, people know, realize that, you know, if they're unlucky enough to get stopped, well then they could be unlucky enough to have a dog smell the drugs on the outside of the car and then their whole rental enterprise goes down the toilet. It, generally the reaction is pretty good. I know I take them out for football games. If I'm ever on a detail and people always love coming up and they ask me questions, there's a lot of, a lot of general interest in police canines. When we first started the canine unit here, People had this uh, thought in their mind that we would walk our drug detecting dogs up and down the dormitory hallways and see if the dogs would smell drugs inside of a room. And that was never our intention and we've never ever tried that nor would we ever do it. A typical shift actually, um, Bosco, he basically just rides around me through my patrol wherever I go. He looks from one window to the next, he never sits down, he doesn't lay down, he just is always, always watching for trouble I guess. This is what it sounds like in my car all the time. In the cruiser, there's a, an access door for the dog to get from the back to the front or stick his head through. Um, mine's stuck, stuck about halfway, which is the perfect spot for Bosco because uh, I can reach back and pet him. He can get some of his head through and hang out um, at the same time as uh, he can't come into the front of the car and destroy it. Um, before it got jammed, I didn't shut it once all the way and he was able to pry it open somehow and within like 15 seconds of me being out of the car, he ate some of the wires that ran to the computer out. It seems on uh, car stops that I, I get less uh, resistance to things. If I'm going to affect an arrest or something, people are more cooperative just because uh, Bosco's in the police car barking up a storm. Quiet. I have no idea what he's barking at now. So when he barks at people in the car, I don't really correct him too much for it because I don't want him second guessing himself as to whether or not he's supposed to bark to someone when I need him to bark. Well, I can set the temperature in the car or the computer for what I don't want it to exceed. When the temperature is reached, um, I have a pager in my belt that'll activate. Um, the car when on, the windows will roll down and a, there's, an extra, there's a fan mounted in the uh, interior of the rear portion of the car. That'll turn on to vent the hot air out of the car and then the uh, sirens and the uh, lights will go on in the car as well. There's an emergency release. I have it in my belt. It's a simple push button. And what happens is when I push that button, there's a piston on the rear 
passenger side door that activates, it'll pop the door open. And the dog's been trained to come to my side once that door is released. And if I'm in a physical altercation at that point, he'll just start biting whatever is in the mix. Hopefully not me. Officer Varaski, who's a canine officer now, has been in this department oh, for probably about 15 years now. And she handles the other, our other uh, police service dog, who's Diesel. He's a Dutch Shepherd. His drive is unbelievable. Um, he's just really a great dog, and she's, she's a really good handler with him. They're a great pair together. They, Diesel is uh, faster, I think. It seems like he's fast. He's a really quick little dog, um, and uh, he can jump. I don't know. He can jump high. I don't know if, I've never seen a dog jump so high. It's like dog on springs. I've seen drugs in the ceiling like eight feet in the air. And this dog will literally jump up and pir spin itself like a pirouette right underneath it. It'll, it's unreal. My name is Liana. I work for UMass Police Department and I have a police dog. Helping me today is Officer Joe. He's from Wolverham and he has a police dog. That Shepherd, this is what my dog is, Diesel. They're just, they're just crazy. They're like the Tasmanian devil from the cartoons. They're crazy. <laughs> but they're, they're really smart dogs. Sometimes he's smarter than me. If he had thumbs, I'd be in trouble. Because he'd be driving cars. He'd be like ordering stuff on the phone, like Chinese food. I'd be in trouble. There's really no spray that works like that. We have bad guys that take drugs and they hide them in peanut butter. They put it in coffee because they think they're going to fool our dogs. But again, our, because of the way their noses work, they can. All it is to them is it's drugs that smell like peanut butter, but they still smell the drugs. <laughs> they don't know or it's that. drugs that smell like coffee, but they still smell the drugs. When we do something like this, everything we do with our dogs has a command. I think she says, check with hers. When I want Sharon to find drugs, I tell him drugs. That's it. <laughs> when we do, uh, would you, just, you said what, check or something? Fetch, fetch it up. <laughs> fetch it up to, to, to Diesel means we're going to find something <coughs> hidden in the world. Again. Oh, wow. That was wow. That's so cool. <laughs> they work super quick wow. for us. So he's going to lay down. He's pointing at it with his nose. Oh, yeah. Mom, it's here. Give me my wooby. Give me my wooby. Give me my wooby. So he's found that. We get a little bit of play time. He's going to jump around, and again, no matter what we do with our dogs, if you're watching them, their tails are wagging. This to them is the best thing in the world. Uh, as you can see, if you watch, watch Diesel now, just look at him. I change my behavior, I look at him aggressively. You can see now, it, he's, he's, I walk away, I'm not a threat, I'm just kind of hanging out, I'm okay, but... I change my behavior. Dogs feed off human behavior. I'm not showing you my hands. Do it now, set dog! <laughs> when you're looking at him, I'm going to try and talk at the same time. You can see he's holding me in one spot. He's not dragging me all over the place. The other thing that you're look, looking at is his tail is wagging. This is not a dog who's biting because he's mad. This is a dog who's biting because this is what we taught him to do. When we do this with the dogs too, we can hit him, we can grab him. These are the things that the normal dog that you that was biting would not do. You hit that dog, it would run away from you. He is not going to let me go for anything until. Suspect, stand still. Boost. Lots. Lots. Take two steps away from my dog. Stand still. Boost. My favorite thing about Bosco is just his attitude. He's just a happy, go lucky. He's a happy, go lucky dog. You know, he's uh, he's just great. I try to train a little with him every day. That's just short little blocks of training, just obedience typically, um, and then we always always have some play time. Two or three times a day, we always play catch, and uh, he loves it. That's what he lives for. He's got a big play drive, so we always uh, always playing with him. He's just uh, if he was in a big city, we wouldn't be able to play a lot because it actually wears him out. But those dogs get their play reward through actually deployment after deployment. Like LA, that's all they do is deploy those dogs all day long. We don't have that here, luckily. I say luckily, because I wouldn't want to be there. So 
you know, it's not an environment I enjoy this environment. I think Bosco enjoys this environment. It's a stress-free environment where we, uh, we get to play a lot. And the outcome of the game is causing some problems at UMass, where students are apparently rioting on campus. Oh, How the dogs come to play for uh, disturbances, large-scale disturbances, is they're used either um, to protect the, either a flank or the side of, a, of a, a line that's pushing a bunch of people. This year, someone decided not to uh, heed the advice to, to leave or they were going to get arrested, and I believe they actually closed in on Officer Vraski and some officers. And uh, the dog Diesel there, it was uh, none too happy. Well, anyway, the, guy, the individual ended up subsequently got arrested, and then he was charged with... Uh, more than uh, some of the other people were. We train uh, two days a month, at least minimum two days a month, 16 hours a month. And uh, the dogs are in the high 90s for percentage, for accuracy. If I call a clean, a clean car dirty, so if I see there's drugs in this car, it's all over. I don't want to have a dog that walks up to a car and then indicates the presence of narcotics and I pull the operator and passengers out of a car and search for drugs and there are none. You know, that's, that's a horrible, thing to do to the community. It's a lot of work for me, but worse so, I just have completely ruined someone's day for nothing. All the initial training, it's all positive, it's all play, it's all reward, it's all the dog running around going to do things that it does in nature, um, really. So if it was a bite sleeve the dog was supposed to apprehend, the, the bad guy will slip the bite sleeve so the dog can carry it around and he gets to run around the circle and basically show it to everyone who's there like it's pack. And that's what they do in the wild. Police dogs have been trained to bite and hold. They don't readjust their grip. It minimizes the uh, actual physical harm that the uh, suspect is receiving. The decoy who's running downrange is basically wearing a, a bite suit or a bite sleeve and the dog apprehends that person by bite, they play with them. It's like a giant tug of war toy. You hear a lot of high happy voices, a lot of play. Oh, the dogs love that and that's what makes them work. Um, people have this image out there that police officers beat their dogs to make them cruel and vicious and mean. If you beat your dog at home, you know he's not going to want to come near you and he's not going to want to do what you want him to do. It's all positive. Typically, you hope to get eight or nine years out of, the, out of a working dog just because the, uh, the things we ask him to do are take tolls on him. On his body over time, just the training, the running, the jumping, the bite work. That he needs, that he needs to do every couple of weeks just to keep himself sharp, and us sharp as a team. It takes a toll on the body, you know. He has fun doing it, but just like any, it's like an athlete, like a football player or something. It just beats up the body after time. So, and then so we hope to get quiet. We hope to get a good couple, at least three or four more working years out of him. I hope about nine, maybe ten at that point, and then he'll retire with me. Don't hang out with me and my family. At least that's the goal.